Sure, I'm Roger Perry. I'm chairman of a number of different uh, businesses, mostly in the media sector. Uh, my current uh, startup is Chrysalis Vision, uh, which is a long-form TV drama maker. Uh, I set it up with Chris Wright and with Luke Johnson, and we're trying to make the sort of television uh, that is now very much in demand, uh, things like the British version of Breaking Bad. So uh, it's a long-run uh, business because it takes you two or three years, actually, to get a show into production, but that's what we're doing at the moment, and we're actually using crowdfunding to fund it. Uh, we're launching next week on Crowdcube. Well, you know, the great historical problem, fundamentally, was classified advertising moving to the web. I mean, that was the real problem for local newspapers, for magazines. And it's one of the reasons, actually, that television was relatively um, unimpacted in the past, because it was, a, it was a classified advertising translation. I think going forward, all other types of commercial messaging, advertising and sponsorship, are going to find themselves much more challenged by, by digital technologies. And essentially it comes down to the fact that the publisher, be that a video publisher or, or a print, traditional print publisher, is going to be more and more able to have almost a one-on-one -on -one dialogue with the reader or viewer, and the advertising is going to flow with that. So it's almost as if the, the advertising experience that you'll have in the future will be subtly different from the advertising experience that I'll have in the future, because it's going to reflect you know, your particular needs and objectives and lifestyle requirements. Well, I think there will be even more onus upon the creators of advertising, the agencies, to make it entertaining and relevant. You know, we're, we're going to want to give our time to something that we actually quite enjoy consuming. And I think those publishers that will be the most successful are the ones that genuinely have a whole series of one-on-one -on -one relationships with their viewers or readers. I mean, it's almost impossible to imagine now that the traditional newspaper 10 years ago had no idea really who its readers were because someone went into a news agent and they bought the newspaper the actual publisher hadn't the faintest idea now obviously they did research subsequently to find out what their readers were like but they didn't know them whereas right from the get-go uh, a social media environment uh, google or something like that it knows everything about you it knows your name it knows where you live it knows your travel patterns um, it's got your email, it's almost certainly got your mobile phone and so the, 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 the trend will have to be for publishers to have that series of one-on-one -on -one relationships. It becomes not mass media in the sense of you know general broadcast, it becomes, I suppose there is such a word, micro-mass. There's a lot of people involved, but you know them all as individuals. Um, I think a, a generic challenge is margins. I mean, everybody now is facing uh, an environment where their margins are much more squeezed because there's a lot more, if you like, efficiency mechanisms getting into the system. Um, and you've also got the challenge that a true internet business like Google or like uh, Facebook or indeed as like Microsoft was because you have this sense of once you've made that initial investment every incremental pound or dollar of revenue is virtually profit um, and that, that's the real test that you're trying to get to. A lot of traditional companies clearly don't have that um, you know, because they're having to put extra resources in to serve extra, extra customers. There's, there's two aspects of life here. So the first one is we as human animals really do enjoy sometimes uh, experiencing a physical live event. We, we like to be there partly because we're seeing other human beings acting, partly because we have a slight sense that it is unique. It'll never be quite the same again. You know, no two theatrical performances are identical. Whereas you know, every time you watch a Harry Potter movie, you're seeing the same movie. Um, so I think theatre has uh, a role in a, in a digital world, partly because we're, we're social animals, we like coming together. But the second point is this point of craft skills um, that even if media is produced digitally and distributed digitally, uh, if it is a drama-based medium, at the heart of it, it still has writers, actors, directors. And the theatre is an extraordinary uh, educational experience for people to learn their craft skills, which they can then apply later on. So that's why I think the theatre thrives and booms, for the two different reasons, that people actually feel like going to physical events, and um, the professionals recognise it's a great way to learn their trades. When I was running Clear Channel, one of our most successful bits was our live music uh, division, we went on to become Live Nation. And it just grew and grew and grew every year. And there seemed to be an almost insatiable demand 
uh, for going to live events, going to festivals, uh, people really enjoyed it. And it wasn't clearly for the quality of the music. I mean, if you actually wanted to listen to the Red Hot Chili Peppers, you were going to do much better actually buying the album, streaming the album, but people wanted to go for the, the physical experience. I'm very optimistic that a lot of the challenges and discontinuities that have made the last 10 years so difficult will begin to be resolved and stabilised. So I think that models will emerge that work. You know, so people will fine-tune the subscription model and get it right. They'll fine-tune the personalised advertising model and get it right. Um, they'll, they'll get the balance, if they're a publisher, between the print product and the digital product. You know, where people made mistakes perhaps first time round is they had a physical product and then they tried to manifest it digitally. So the early magazines were kind of PDF you know, flips on a tablet. You know, the early newspapers were basically a website that looked just like a newspaper. What, what I think will, we will move towards is because of the immediacy of it, most material will initiate in digital and then there will be a, um, a, a reproduction of it in a physical form uh, in a different sort of frequency because we as consumers like that will enjoy it. I mean, I certainly would not be that surprised to see daily local newspapers disappear completely within 10 years, and possibly even daily national newspapers. Um, you know, it, it, makes, uh, it makes much more sense in some ways to sort of physically go to print at the point that you need to go to print.